everyone. First, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, second of all, um, I want to say I don't, I don't look all that good. I just spent the whole day um, out at the barn uh, riding my horse on a long trail ride. So I smell and I'm kind of dirty. Um, but uh, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed, to everyone who's watched the video, to everyone who's left comments. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm very humbled by it. Um, kind of overwhelmed too because I'm not setting out to be some YouTuber or anything like that. Just I know that um, when I was trying to decide if I wanted to have surgery or not, um, I watched a lot of videos and before and afters and, you know, um, what's going wrong and stuff like that. So, um, I thought that I would share, um, a slightly different perspective, which is a very real one. Um, and not to scare anyone away from having surgery. Um, because the truth is I, um, I don't have any regrets. Um, but today's topic is, what the fuck is wrong with me? Seriously. Um, cause that's a really, really good question. Um, so get to some stats really quick. Um, crap. I hold on. Here I was, I thought I was prepared, but I'm not. So these are my stats. So I am, I'm putting my glasses on too. I'm almost 50. So I'm um, 14 weeks out from surgery and I have lost a total of 31 pounds since surgery and 45 and a half total. Um, in case someone's curious, the first month after surgery, I lost 19 pounds. The second month I lost five and a half and the third month I lost six pounds. So that's the gist. And I currently weigh 184 and a half. My highest weight was 230, actually it was probably 240 um, years ago before I, years ago. Anyways, um, and I started at uh, 215 pounds on the day of surgery, which was February 2nd. So now I want to get to what's wrong with me. Um, so a friend of mine had a while back some, this guy she was dating, um, who is a narcissist, uh, caused me and my friend to watch a lot of narcissist videos. And in that, I learned that I'm an empath. And an empath is a person who's not like, can read other people's minds or feelings. That's, that's not what, what this term is about. It's about people who take on um, other people's emotions and problems and other people's happiness as their own responsibility. And that might um, actually be what's ha happened to you that's caused you to seek out having bariatric surgery. Because as it turns out, that's probably the cause of mine. Um, it's also a common term for the victim in a codependent um, situation. Um, it's usually with a narcissist or some other comparable personality disorder um, that might like to inflict pain um, and suck energy from other people, kind of like a vampire does. Um, so that that's where that's how I'm going to be talking about me being um, an empath because um, as an empath, taking on other people's happiness is my own responsibility. It's not like they asked me to, I just, and not like if I, that I could, um, I intellectually know that your happiness is up to you. It's not up to somebody else, meaning someone else's happiness isn't my responsibility, but emotionally and subconsciously that's a whole nother story and it just ends up being that even though we know intellectually not to that we shouldn't do that um we do it anyways and um i learned that as an empath um i'm very alone in the thoughts that i have as to how the world works how people think um and 
other people just don't think like I do. Um, kind of like the whole do unto others as you would have do unto to you. Um, other people evidently, you know, except for other empaths, don't really give a shit how they treat people, including me. So case in point, you may have seen um, my little Hawaii video that I did on vacations. First time I've ever gone anywhere. Um, I had a really, really, really good time. And I'm going to talk about um, another possible post-op issue that you should probably stick around and watch because um, this could very easily happen to you too after you have surgery. But while I was in Hawaii, when I got there, um, the friend that invited me, turns out she's in, in a domestic violence situation with um, with a narcissist. And by the third day, I said, hey, got to go to a hotel. Well, she had some people coming in um, and uh, family members, friend, whatever. And I knew that they were supposed to stay with her too. And now that she's not at her house, um, I offered for them to stay in the hotel. And, um, you know, they didn't even say thank you. Not even once. Um, there was a point, I think it was the second day, the second night that they stayed in my room. Um, one of them offered to buy me dinner and I said, no, at first, because that's what empaths do, you know, for whatever reason, I have a hard time someone doing nice for us. But, um, so I said no, and then she said, no, really. And I said, okay, I'll take it as payment for staying in the hotel, kind of, which it's another issue after surgery. Um, I don't have much of a filter on this little thing right here. It kind of blurts things out that I don't mean it to, um, although turns out it makes me feel better to do it. Anyways, um, so, um, she, I think she may have said thank you at that point, but she's, I think she just said, okay. Anyways, um, you know, it wasn't even like they, um, asked for me, asked to stay in my room. I just offered, and that's usually what empaths do too. They just offer to do things for people and then get used and then end up res resenting the whole world for using them and abusing them. And the truth of the matter is I offered and, and you know, I didn't really have to convince them, but I did offer and, um, and then I, it kind of really hit me. That's when it, it really dawned on me. Like the fuck is wrong with you? Like how many people just go offering me free shit all the time? Not very many. Um, but here I am and I'm going to give you another case in point as to just kind of, um, how sick I am. Cause I wasn't really, I wasn't hurt, um, or really even shocked, um, by, by that. But, um, with it, it just really opened my eyes as to part of what led to my bariatric disease was a mental disease. I'm calling it that a mental health professional probably wouldn't, but, um, I've been examining what do I do that's made me fat? How, why do I put this food in my mouth? Why am I so angry? What the hell is going on? And, um, this self-examination is kind of becoming the next level of layers to the onion of the bariatric disease. And so, um, I figure if I don't get this, you know, figured out soon, I'm not, I'm ultimately not going to be successful with my surgery and that's not what I want. So, um, it's really important to me for my journey to find out why do I keep putting food in my mouth? Cause you know, I'll be straight up with you. I ate a blueberry donut on Friday. Was it Friday? Maybe it was Thursday. I'm not sure. It was one of those days. Whatever. I ate it. It was Friday. Um, and I only was going to have half and somehow I ate the whole thing. And, and I was just like, after, and I didn't even, I didn't even realize I was doing it when I was doing it. I mean, yes, I was aware I was eating a fucking donut, but it was like, it was almost like I was possessed by something, like possessed by a demon for a minute. Like I was outside of myself 
seeing myself eat this donut. It's saying, don't eat the donut, don't eat the donut. And couldn't stop myself from eating the donut. So, um, yeah. So I want to figure this out. So anyways, um, this one last little thing about just how sick I am as an empath is, um, when I'm driving, especially with my husband, cause we drive very differently and we take, we drive really different and I take every shortcut through town. If I hit a red light, I turn. And then if I had another red light, I turn. He just goes straight until he makes a turn and then he's there. Me, I'm like, to get there. Um, so when I'm the one that's driving, I'm so sick. I actually feel responsible for bad traffic. Like if I turn left and there ends up being really bad traffic on that, that road, I'm apologizing. I feel so bad that the traffic's bad. I feel stupid. Like some spotlights on me saying, you know, you idiot, you shouldn't have turned this way and that he's thinking I'm an idiot because I shouldn't have turned that way and that he, in his mind, he's thinking, I told you so. I wouldn't have gone this way. Like, I hear all this going on in my head and I feel guilty and like seriously, like the traffic's my responsibility. So that's, um, that's kind of bad. Um, and I was talking today after the trail ride, I was talking to some girls. We were um, having lunch, and I actually it was good. Um, and I was saying that part of me like doesn't feel bad for telling people, you know, just how things really are. Um, I mean, I've been apologizing. I had to apologize to someone last night at the gym. Uh, someone that evidently I knew like 15, 20 years ago. And I just said something kind of rude and inappropriate. And afterwards I was like, dang, seriously? So I, I found her and I apologized to her just for saying it. And she wasn't harmed, but you know, she didn't correct me in my being rude. Um, she didn't, when I said I was rude, she didn't stop me and say, oh no, you weren't rude. She just, anyways. So, um, yeah, I discovered before, um, before my vacation that, you know, I'm angry because I feel unheard. And I, I do want to say that just that revelation alone has reduced my anger by 80% at least. Um, I'm not, and, and probably the vacation too, but, um, I really think the revelation, um, uh, made, a just a huge monumental difference in, um, me, being so pissed off at the world, um, is that now that I can look at it and say, you know, I, I feel unheard. I'm just doing a much better job at making myself heard, like speaking up and saying something. Um, unfortunately, you know, the pendulum has swung from here that I never used to say anything and I resented everyone and I was angry all the time, even though they didn't know I was angry. I was angry inside to the pendulum has now swung all the way over here where now I'm kind of apologizing for shit I say. So I'm kind of careful in my apologies though, that I let someone know, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for for how I reacted and how I acted, I'm not apologizing for what I felt or for what I said, but I am apologizing for how I said it. I needed to say it, but I didn't need it to say that to say it that way. And so far, everyone's actually been pretty, um, pretty understanding, pretty forgiving. They know what I've been going through, quitting smoking and going through the surgery and stuff like that. And know that I'm. I'm just trying to find my way afterwards. I do want to be successful. I want to keep the weight off that I've lost. Um, and having a blueberry donut isn't the way to do it. Um, so, um, I stuffed down my words for 41 years, um, since I was six years old and I stuffed down not only my words, but my thoughts. And I never wanted anyone to be mad at me, disappointed in me, to disapprove of me or things that I did. Um, I didn't want anyone to be unhappy about anything. And that's where somehow along this road from six years old to 50, um, 
I took it as my personal responsibility that the whole world is happy and that's the most ridiculous thing ever. Um, not just happy with me, but just happy in general. That if someone is unhappy in my presence, um, I actually feel feel that with them, that unhappiness. And so I want to take that pain away from them, obviously, but also from myself. So, um, that's why it's been so, um, so important for me to figure this out. Um, because we all have to find our own happiness and that means after surgery or even if you don't get surgery if you know watching some videos you decide that the risk isn't worth um isn't worth it that you could maybe lose weight on your own go for it um no one needs to be some size 6 barbie doll anyways um that's not my goal i'm i'm curvy um got a bubble butt and always have and if I get to a place where my bubble butt's gone, I'm I'm done losing weight because that's my signature move is walking away. So um, we're going to keep that. Um, so let's see. I have a little um, notes on my computer screen right down here trying to keep me from getting rambling and com totally and completely off track. Um, so with that, I want to say I've been watching these really good um videos on YouTube about narcissists. And if you look right down there on my channel, I have some playlists and one of them is about narcissists. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, but you feel like you're in an abusive situation or in a codependent situation or an unhealthy situation, you might want to check out some of those videos and see if you too could possibly be with a narcissist or maybe have been raised by a narcissist um, or like me, I escaped um, being married to a narcissist. However, my 19-year-old son turns out as a narcissist. Um, and so by watching the videos, I'm learning how to deal with him as an adult and to not take his bait because that kid can get me from zero to rage in about half a second. And... Um, and I realized that he, when I sat down and I was like, okay, if I know what my, what my triggers are or why I'm so angry, um, what are my triggers? And it turns out that my son and my mom and my, um, work for, there's a lot of people that work there and there's certain people more than others, but, um, in my work, those are some triggers. And so once I identified that, then I was able to, um, just look at it more clearly and ask myself if the things that are happening, what's worth it, what's not worth it, what's worth speaking up for, what's not worth it, what's worth letting go, what shouldn't I let go of, you know, because just because you should let shit go doesn't mean you're supposed to let everything go and just let people trample all over you, which is what I've done in the past because I let it go, and, um, and so people didn't know where my boundaries were because I didn't define them for anybody because I was the person who got along with everybody. I was the team player. I, you know, next thing you know, I'm 230 pounds stuffing down a donut, you know, three times a day. Um, so, um, I think I'm about done with that. Watch, look down in there. Also in my playlist, um, look down in my playlist. Um, I have something called It's a Good Thing. That's the playlist. There's some really good videos on um, on how to let stuff go, how to get motivated, how to get into action. Um, there's a really great video by, Mel excuse me, hiccups. That's my new thing from post-op is hiccups. Never had them my whole life, and now I got to get them all the time. Um, Mel Robbins. I got a great uh, video in there, Five Second Rule. I use that. Um, it helps me when I think to use it. Um, and she's a five, four, three, two, one, go. I say five, four, three, two, one, no. Put the fork down. I just have to remember to do it. Um, so that's that. Look at the playlists and see if there's some videos down there. Um, here's another thing I wanted to talk about. So I got my three month um, follow up at Kaiser, and the doctor um, recommended these vitamins. Half the class jumped on their phone immediately on the Amazon and ordered them because she'd scared us 
terrified us about not taking our vitamins, about what could happen to us if we don't take them, if we don't get our B1 and B12, if we don't get our calcium. So this is um, bariatric choice, all-in-one multivitamin with calcium citrate. And if you're post-op, you know just how awesome that is to have an all-in-one that has your calcium in there because those calcium pills are like horse pills. You have to take like six a day. Um, now, they're chewable wafers, and I think they have three different flavors. Um, I got um, berry, very berry, because I was doing um, Tespo, which I love the whole Tespo idea. It's uh, like a little Keurig um, where it shoots out powdered vitamins into a little shot glass with water, and, um, and then you just chug it. Super easy, but it was orange-flavored, and I could barely tolerate it um, initially that first month post-op. But the longer it goes on, the longer um, I cannot tolerate orange flavor, and I gag, and I'm done. I can't do orange flavor anymore. And um, I can do it if I uh, blend it with some like pineapple juice or orange juice or something, but then there's an awful lot of sugar in that stuff. So I'm trying to, to see if how these will work out. Anyways, so this is a, one of the wafers. You take four of these a day. And just to give you an idea of just how big it is, right, that's my mouth. And that's how big that wafer is. But it's a chewable and a very, very, it's actually tolerable. Um, it's tart, um, but it is berry flavor. I, I just don't chew it too fast because it's big. Um, but I chew it. And then another thing that I got too as another tip is this is the Hydrate, H-I-D-R-A-T-E, Spark um, Smart Water Bottle. I got it for $50 on Amazon. And it has... Um, a sensor in here um, and it lights up to remind you uh, to take a sip and so that's really good um, and that's helped me um, get back on track of drinking um, my 64 ounces a day so um, I do want to say I'm super happy no regrets with my surgery um, I'm really high high as a kite on feeling good and looking good. Um, not that I don't want to lose any more weight cause I, cause I really do. Um, but if this is as good as it got, I'd be happy. I'm, I'm halfway through, um, my excess weight loss. I needed to lose, um, 90 to a hundred pounds. I'm just going to call it 90 cause at my age, I don't want to be too skinny, but, um, so I should probably lose 90 pounds and I've lost 45. So I'm halfway there. Um, and that would, would give me a target uh, weight of 140 pounds and so I think that that's probably about good. Um, so one last thing that I want to talk about is cross addiction um, and I'm really grateful that Kaiser made me quit smoking before surgery and that I had to have it done for a, you know make sure I really did quit smoking before surgery um, and I haven't picked it back up probably part of my anger um, but um, and the reason is cross addiction um, they know that, you know, again, on my, you know, um, why am I so friggin' angry um, video, I talked about, um, you know, most of us, not all, some of us really are just addicted to um, food, but most of us got there um, by the trauma vehicle. And um, with that, we have oftentimes not just a food addiction, but cigarettes, alcohol, drugs. Um, and then there's the other things that people don't see coming. Um, and they're a little harder because they're not illegal um, at all. And they're so easy to hide. Um, eating is the, is the hardest addiction to hide because if you eat too much, you get fat and everybody can see that. But they don't see the other addictions that we have. And so I found out when I was on vacation um, I have a shopping problem now. Oh, look here. It's lighting up. It's doing it right now. See, it lights up. And so it reminds me to take a sip. So I'm going to take a sip. Um, wasn't four ounces, but I don't want to sit here and chug water on a video. Um, anyways, so, um, you got to look out for the other addictions like shopping, gambling, um, porn or cheating or some other stuff other than, you know, drugs, 
um, those drugs produce a chemical release in our brain. And while I was there, the first day on vacation, we went to a thrift store because I wanted to buy some clothes because I like thrift store shopping now. That's, you know, shopping for skinnier clothes. And, oh, my God, I spent so much money. Not just on myself. I got my husband and all my kids and my friends. I got everybody's stuff at this thrift store from the men got Aloha shirts and um, some surfing t-shirts and um, really cool surfing um bathing suits and I got my stepdaughter this really cute little dress it's so cute um but that was the thing damn and I didn't even look at the bill I just swiped my credit card and packed the shit up and put it in the car and drove around with it in the trunk of the car for a week till the day before I had to go I had to go literally buy another suitcase that's how much and a big one a duffel bag and um so there I was the night before coming home and I'm packing this bag and I'm just refolding everything, putting it in the bag, trying to organize it. Um, oh my God, someone's coming home. Okay, just keep walking. I'm making a video. Go. You're on video. Thank you. Okay. So anyways, I'm at the store. I'm packing, uh, packing up and, um, my friend's watching and I'm, and I'm pulling this out of the bag and this out of the bag and I'm putting it in the suitcase and it, I look at it and as I'm just going through item to item to item, I asked her, was I friggin' high in this store? How did I buy this much shit? Like, was I high? Did I get high and I didn't even see it? And she goes, oh, you were pretty high. And she goes, I don't, I didn't see you take any drugs. And I'm like, why? Well, I didn't take any drugs, but how fucking high was I? Like, this is. It was like $225 I spent, and, and most things were only $3 a piece, so you do the math. Um, just a crazy amount of stuff. So I just want to um, prepare you guys for some cross-addiction stuff, okay? I know this video is long. Thanks for hanging in. Um, just keep an eye out for that. Put Lock your credit cards up, seriously. Um, if you don't got money, even if you do... That's probably even worse if you have some money because you won't even think twice about it. I can't even tell you how many times I swiped that card on vacation and never even looked to see how much it was. Um, I did do pretty good. Um, every morning I went to Starbucks and I got a skinny mocha frappuccino and the egg bite, egg, egg white bites and the bacon gruyere egg bite foods. Um, I drank a protein shake almost every day. Um, I brought my insulated cup and Starbucks was more than happy to fill it with ice, dropped my um, protein shake in there that I got um, at Target when, or Costco when we, when I got to Hawaii. Um, and then my friend and I shared a meal every time. So she wanted to lose some weight too. And since I can't eat a whole thing and we really didn't, you know, what are we going to do with leftovers on vacation? So we just would split a meal. I would take more veggies. She would take more carbs and, and, um, I really didn't spend a lot of money on food. I spent most of it on shopping like a crazy person. Anyway, so um, mahalo and good luck with your surgery too. Thank you.